Okay, welcome back, Exponents and Radicals, uh, Lesson 5, Application of Radicals. So there are a few ways where we can, uh, we can play around with radicals to have them do some stuff that we want them to do. Uh, a couple of these ways are, uh, well, one of them is going to lead directly to some stuff we're going to do later uh, in a different unit, in our trig unit, but uh, well, here we go. So we can use radicals. Uh, we can order a set of irrational numbers. So we can place a ranking order on a set of some irrational numbers. So all of these are going to be irrational because they're square roots of non-perfect squares. Right? So in order to do that, we have to make them all look the same. And the only way we can really compare is if we can have them all have the same root and radicand. Well, they're all square roots, so that would work. But I can't make this have a radicand of two, of three. I can't make this have a radicand of five. And uh, I can't make any of them have a radicand of two. So what I want to do is make them all into entire radicals because they're all the same root. If they're all entire radicals, then I can decide, well, which one's going to be biggest and then which one's going to be smallest. Okay, So I convert them all to entire radicals first. So hopefully this is a fairly quick process for you, but three square root five, uh, we should know that is going to be three squared times five, which is gonna be nine times five, which is the square root of 45. That's number one. Number two, five square root three would be the square root of five squared times three, which is the square root of 25 times three, or the square root of, 75, two, <clears throat> should probably circle those in a different color. Square root 15, I don't need to do anything with. It's already an entire radical. Two square root eight would be two squared times eight. Two squared is four times eight, which is square root 32. Let's circle that one just so we know. And eight square root two, eight, squared times two goes on the inside. That is the square root of 64 times two. That's the square root of 128. Now, looking at that, they all have the same root. Which one's gonna give us the biggest number? 128, of course, right? Next, square root of 75. Then we have square root of 45. Then we have a square root of 32 and square root 15. So we can rank irrational numbers, greatest to least or least to greatest, depending on the question that's given. <clears throat> we can also use radicals to show uh, the exact values of uh, Pythagorean theorem. So exact values are uh, not decimals, so fractions or simplified radical. So we know that the Pythagorean theorem is c squared is equal to a squared plus b squared. From this, I can figure out that my, oh, let's, uh, let's change colors. That my distance from here to here would be, what is that going to be from here to here? Two, two, four, six, eight, nine. That's going to be nine. And then this distance would be three. So really, I have a right triangle that looks like this. Hypotenuse, boot leg, leg, three, nine, right angle. What is C? <clears throat> so I would start with my formula, a squared plus B squared. I would substitute three squared plus nine squared. That would give me C squared is equal to nine plus 81 which is equal to c squared is equal to 90. c would be the square root of 90. Now, normally, you'd be asked for a decimal number. But if it's asking for an exact value measurement, then all I want to do is I want to simplify this radical. I don't want the decimal. Okay, So I know that square root of 90 is the square root of 9 times 10, which is the square root of 9 times the square root of 10. Whoops, I wrote that all wrong, didn't I? Which is the square root of 9 times the square root of 10 which is three square root 10. That's your exact value measurement for the length of this hypotenuse. Okay. 
And that's the part that you're going to use uh, later in a different unit, okay? that exact value measurement of Pythagorean theorem. Uh, there's also something called the distance formula. If I wanted the distance between those two points, um, the distance between those two points, which is based on uh, based on the Pythagorean theorem, okay, except using the coordinate point. So maybe I don't have a graph I can count my grid on or count my my uh, two legs on. Okay, so a negative six two and three one. So my neg my points are negative negative six two and three one. One. These would become my x1, y1, x2, y2 values. And I would simply substitute into this formula. So my distance is equal to, which is, should, is going to give us the same thing. It's going to give us the same answer, just a different way to get there, right? Square root of x2, which is 3 minus minus 6 squared plus y2 1 minus 2 y2 two, x2 two, y2 two, 1 minus 2 squared which gives us what's wrong oh that's a negative 2 that's why something was wrong Ooh, something was wrong minus a minus 2 minus minus two. So that's minus one minus minus two. <clears throat> that's going to give us the square root of three minus minus six is nine squared plus one minus minus two is three squared. And you can see it's the same values, right? Square root of 81 plus nine, which is the square root of 90, which is equal to three square root 10. Same way, same place. Okay. Two different ways to do that calculation. Maybe you have a graph, you can count the legs and plug into the Pythagorean formula, or maybe you just have the points. Okay. Example three, use the Pythagorean theorem to determine the exact length of AB, express the answer as an exact value in simplest mixed radical form, and as a decimal to the nearest hundred. Okay. So we want A, a, B, A, B, this length. But I can't get that length without this length. So I need that length first. So this would be right angle, this would still be C. So it's gonna be the opposite, fun the opposite uh, reverse calculation for Pythagorean theorem. C squared is equal to A squared, B squared. I'm gonna do my first triangle first, the 12 and the eight. So it's gonna be 12 squared squared plus a squared, which is actually x, I guess. I called it x, so I might as well put x in. 144 is equal to 64 plus x squared. Take away 64, take away 64 is equal to x squared. So that gives me 80 is equal to x squared. x is equal to the square root of 80. And if I simplify that, I know that that is the square root of 16 times five, which is square root of 16 times the square root of five, which is four square root five. So this now is X. So now I have a new triangle, four square root five, and this was six and I want C. So now I'm gonna go C squared is equal to A squared plus B squared is equal to four square root five squared plus six squared, which is going to be four square root five is gonna be four squared, square root five squared, square everything, plus 36. Well, this is gonna be 16 times the square root of five, 25, whoops, times five is 25 plus 36 going to be 16 times 5 plus 36, which is 50, 80 plus 36, which is equal to 116 is equal to C squared. 
So C is equal to the square root of 116. And then we would try and simplify that. Okay, so now you'd have to think, well, what perfect squares multiply into 116? And I can think of maybe, maybe four. 116, quick check on my calculator. 116. Four and 29, so this is, yeah, square root of four times the square root of 29, oops. Which is equal to the square root of four times the square root of 29, which is equal to two square root 29. Exact value, decimal, plunk it into your handy dandy calculator, and I got 10.77. Okay, so again, using Pythagorean theorem, uh, and exact values with our radicals. Example four, given that square root five is approximately equal to 2.24 and square root 50 is approximately equal to 7.07, find the approximate value of the square root of 500. So this is actually, lots of these questions would be questions that you wouldn't be allowed a calculator on. So be, be aware of that. You might have a quiz or something coming where you wouldn't be allowed a calculator because you can manage all of these or uh, at very least a very basic calculator of which I have lots, so it'll be good. So given that square root of five is approximately equal to 2.24 and 50 is approximately equal to 7.07, .07, approximate the square root of 500. So I'm gonna simplify this first. 500 I know is 100 times five, which is the square root of 100 times the square root of five, which is 10 square root five. Well, if I know that square root five is 2.24, that's 10 times 2.24, which is 22.4. Okay, so with that approximation and my ability to simplify radicals, I can get a good approximated uh, decimal answer. And then we just do the rest. 5,000, 5,000, well, we're not doing cube roots, we're doing square roots. So I know that this is 50, times 100, which is equal to the square root of 50 times the square root of 100. I wrote these backwards, but that's okay. Which is equal to 50, square root of 50 times 10, or 10 square root 50. And I know that 50 is 7.07, .07, so 10 times 7.07 .07 is equal to 70.7. .7. Question C. Simplify square root 20. Well, I'll do prime factorization just to show you, refresh your memory. That's two times 10, two times five. Square root 20 is two times two times five. We're doing square root with a for a pair. So this two comes out, we're left with square root five. I know that square root five is 2.24, 2.24, 2, And when I multiply that by two, I get 4.48. Question D, 0 0.5, 0 0.05, sorry, 0 0.05, my first step, my first step is I'm gonna have to do this. I'm gonna have to go square root of 0 0.05 over one. So I don't like those decimals, that's not gonna help us. Now I can't have a decimal in a fraction, so this becomes five over 100. Multiply the top and bottom by 100. So it's just an equivalent fraction. Now I have the square root of five over the square root of 100. And I know that five was 2.24 and the square root of 100 is 10. So this is going to be 0 0.0, no, not zero, 0 0.224. And then question E, same process, similar process, I guess. Square root of 0.5. Square root of 0 0.5, let's see what happens. 0 0.5 over one, which is gonna be five over 10, which doesn't help us because that's not a perfect square. Oh, which would also be 50 over 100. Now it's a square root of 50 over the square root of 100, which is equal to, I know the square root of 50 is 7.07, .07, and 100 is 10. And I do that division, 
0 0.707. Ooh. Seemed a bit fast, but the beauty is you can click pause, you can rewind, you can watch this as many times as you want uh, until you've seen it enough so that you uh, kind of have an idea. Okay. Again, checking Scholantis or whatever other kind of tracking system we're using uh, to figure out what questions uh, need to be worked on. And we'll see you next time.